Hi students, good morning everybody. Today's topic is Hesla. This is from Thermodynamics of class level. So before going to this, if you are first time to my channel, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell icon. So now let us move on to our topic that is Hesla. Hesla of constant heat summation. So here in order to understand this Hesla, let us consider a hypothetical conversion of the reaction A to D. So the conversion of A to D. So during this process, the enthalpy change will be, let it be delta H. So the enthalpy change. So the enthalpy change during the conversion of A to D be delta H. So this conversion A to D can take place directly or indirectly. So indirectly, this process takes place from A to B or B is converted to C and again C is converted to D. So here this process is single step process and this process is three steps process. Okay. For the conversion of A to D, let the enthalpy change be delta H. Here it is we are writing here. This is delta H. So for A to B, let it be delta H1. For B to C, let the enthalpy change be delta H2. For the conversion of C to D, let it be delta H3. So here, the process of conversion of A to D takes place directly in this step. It will take place in indirect method by three steps. So whatever may be the number of steps, the enthalpy change during conversion of A to D is same. That means here delta H should be equal to delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3. So this is about Hessler. So let us look on to definition. So here it is. So the total enthalpy change in a chemical reaction is same whether the reaction takes place in single step or several steps. Okay. So here this is a single step process for the conversion of A to D or this conversion of A to D takes place in three steps. First A converted to B with enthalpy change delta H and B converted to C with the enthalpy change delta H2 and C converted to D with the enthalpy change delta H3. So here the total enthalpy change in these three steps should be equal to the enthalpy change in the direct step. That means delta H equal to sum of these three. So that is about Hessla. So the total enthalpy change in a chemical reaction is same whether it takes place in single step or several steps. Okay, clear? So let us consider an example to understand completely. That is the formation of ammonium chloride. Formation of ammonium chloride that is aqueous ammonium chloride from gaseous ammonia and gaseous HCl. So let us consider the formation in different ways. So whatever may be the way the enthalpy change should remains constant. Okay. So let us consider the first way. So in the first step ammonia the gaseous ammonia directly combines with gaseous hydrochloric acid to produce gaseous ammonium chloride. This is also in gaseous state. So here the delta H change in enthalpy is equal to minus 176.1 kilojoules. And consider this gaseous ammonium chloride reacts with aqueous media to produce aqueous ammonium chloride. So here the delta H2 is equal to 16.3 kilojoules. So here the delta H1 is minus 176.1 kilojoules. That means here it is exothermic process. But here it is an endothermic process. This positive sign indicates it is endothermic. This negative sign indicates it is exothermic reaction. Okay. So in this way, first the ammonia, gaseous ammonia is converted to gaseous ammonium chloride by combining with gases HCl. This gaseous ammonium chloride reacts with aqueous media to produce aqueous ammonium chloride. So this is one way. 
so we can produce this aqueous ammonium chloride from gases ammonia and hcl by another way also so that is in the second way we can produce the gases ammonia reacts with aqueous media to produce aqueous ammonia okay so we are converting gases ammonia into aqueous ammonia so here the enthalpy change delta h3 will be minus 35.1 kilojoules and again we are taking hcl gases hydrochloric acid reacts with aqueous media to produce aqueous hcl here it produces aqueous hcl so now the delta h4 will be equal to minus 72.9 kilojoules now these two will combines gases aqueous ammonia will combines with aqueous hcl to produce aqueous ammonium chloride aqueous ammonium chloride here delta h5 let it be delta h5 it is equal to minus 51.5 kilojoules okay so here we are combining directly gases substances gases ammonia reacts with gases hcl to produce gases ammonium chloride this gases ammonium chloride react with aqueous media to produce aqueous ammonium chloride but in this case the gases molecules converts into aqueous media this aqueous ammonia and aqueous hcl combine to form aqueous ammonium chloride so these are the two different methods whatever may be the method of preparation whatever may be the number of steps the total enthalpy change should remains constant that means here the enthalpy change is equal to delta h1 plus delta h2 so that should be equal that is equal to how much by adding these two we get minus 176.1 plus 16.3 that equal to minus 159.8 kilo joules per mole okay so now let us check for this also so here delta h3 plus delta h4 plus delta h5 this is the total enthalpy change for this conversion so that is equal to so by adding these three all are having negative signs by, by adding these three we get again minus 159.8 kilo joules so in this way the total enthalpy change is always remains constant whatever may be the number of steps and whatever may be the mode of preparation so that is about hessla so the total enthalpy change in any chemical reaction is same whether the reaction takes place in single step or of several steps here this reaction takes place in two steps but here this reaction takes place in three steps okay so this hessla can also be applicable for the preparation of carbon dioxide also so carbon graphite reacts with oxygen directly to produce carbon dioxide or graphite reacts with half moles of oxygen first to convert into carbon monoxide and then carbon monoxide converted to carbon dioxide so graphite directly converted to carbon dioxide graphite directly converted to carbon dioxide this is first way in the second way graphite reacts with half moles of oxygen to produce carbon monoxide again carbon monoxide reacts with half moles of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide so here it is graphite means it is in solid state it is converted to gases carbon dioxide oxygen also present in gaseous state so here let it be delta h let it be delta h1 and delta h2 so here delta h should be equal to delta h1 plus delta h2 so experimentally proved that here delta h is equal to minus 393.5 kilo joules per mole and here it is minus 110.5 kilo joules per mole and here it is minus 283.0 kilo joules per mole so simply so delta h is equal to the summation of these two okay the delta h is equal to summation of these two so it can also proved for carbon dioxide preparation of carbon dioxide also so this law is helpful for calculating lattice enthalpy also so here one of the most fundamental thing is for the calculation of lattice energy of any crystal we use this hessla so remember carefully so the hessla is mostly useful for the calculation of lattice enthalpy lattice enthalpy of any crystal 
So, if you consider sodium chloride crystal, the lattice enthalpy of sodium chloride crystal can be calculated by using Born Haber cycle. By using this Born Haber cycle, we can calculate the lattice enthalpy of sodium chloride by using this Hessel law. Okay. Here is a small question for you. So, this carbon dioxide is there. So, what is the structure of this carbon dioxide? What is the structure of this carbon dioxide? Please answer me in comment box. Please answer the question in comment box. What is the structure of carbon dioxide? Okay, thank you. Like the session, share the session and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.